Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how I made this card. Now, this one's a, a pop-up pillar card and I first saw this done by a guy called Jamie Rogers. Um, Craft Mania and Jamie Rogers Crafts. Um, and he came up with, um, I think he came up with this design. Uh, and I just really liked it. I just thought it was really nice. He's got a couple of other different versions of it and there's lots of different things you can do with it. Um, it does fit into an envelope. Now, I've actually changed his sizes a little bit. So this one is actually a five by seven like this, but it goes into a seven by eight envelope. Now you can, if you want to, squidge it backwards and forth like that. If you do that, it then fits into a five by, sorry, not a five, a six by seven envelope. So if you wanted to fit it into a six by six envelope, you could make the height six inches and just obviously you know change these pillar heights just slightly accordingly um i quite like the fact it all squishes to one side that way because i think when the person gets it it's easier just to stand it up you haven't got kind of zigzags going on um but yeah the one that i've made here is really quite sturdy because i've used um i think it's probably about 270 280 gsm card so it is really thick uh so today i'm gonna have a go by using some 200 gsm for the pillars and see if that makes a difference the other thing as well that i've done this card that i'm not doing on the card i'm doing today is i've actually put acetate here so you can you see i've got some, like snow acetate there so on the card i'm doing today i'm not going to do the snowy acetate only because i did run out of it i haven't got enough so uh, <laughs> so that's why I'm not doing that. But it's quite a nice little way of doing it. Um, he'd done one where he'd used three complete pillars. So the pillars don't get smaller. They all stay the same size. And then he's got acetate between each one and various like writing and, you know, sentiments and whatever on. And it looked really good. So there's all sorts of things you could do with this. All sorts of things. Um, so, yeah. So let's get into it. OK, so for this card, you need quite a bit of card. OK, I'm going to warn you now, you do need quite a bit of card. So for the back of the card, the very back section, which is this bit here, this bit, you need a five by seven piece of base card now i've actually used the same cards i use here so i've used a 270 or 280 gsm card for this um, so that will be my back panel um, you also need the pieces for your pillars so i have two pieces that are five by seven two pieces that are five by five and two pieces that are three by five and on all of these, along the five inch edge, you want to score every inch. OK, so I'll just do um, I've already done them already, but I'll just show you where I mean. So on the five by seven piece, you're going to put it in. So you've got the five inch edge and you're going to score down every inch. So at one inch, two inch, three inches and four inches down the seven inch length. Then you repeat that again on the five by five. So you're scoring at one inch, two inch, three inch and four inch. And then you also repeat that on the three by five. So you put it in with the five inch edge and you score at one inch, two inch, three inch and four inch. And you do that on all of your pieces. OK, so you should end up with two five by sevens scored top to bottom. Two five by five scored top to bottom, and two three by fives again scored along the five inch edge, like that. Okay. Okay, so the other thing you're going to need to do with all of these pieces, so all six pieces, is you're just going to need to shave like just like a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch off the edge of this, um, this long edge. Okay, so not off the top, but down the same way you scored. The reason being is when you fold them up to be um, pillars, when you fold down your score lines, you need the, the, the one that goes inside to be slightly smaller, otherwise you won't end up with a pillar. It won't be completely square. So on this here, this bit here just butts up and knocks against that edge there. So you just want to trim 
just a, a tiny just a little fraction off the edge so i'm going to go ahead and do that now okay so i've gone through and i've just shaved off a little bit off these edges of all the edges and um, so now i'm just going to go ahead and burnish them all um, and just fold them all along their lines you want mounting folds on every single one now i've actually used on this um card i'm using double-sided card i thought i'd give it a go because on my original one i use white card and so when it stood up you can see obviously the white inside the pillars um, which i don't mind but i thought i'd give it a go and see with double-sided colored card if that helped um, because then at least when you folded it up You've still got, I mean, obviously you've got that pattern, but you've still got a bit of blue or something inside um, to cover it up with. So I'm going to go ahead now and fold them all up. I'm also, as I fold, I'm going to go ahead and put red tape on this edge. The edge that I've trimmed a little fraction off, I'm going to go ahead and put red tape on that as well. Um, just because I want to remember which panel it is that I've put, I've trimmed the fraction off on. So I'm going to do that now. So you should end up with all of your panels folded and then you've got the red tape on one side. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick all of these pillars together to make pillars. Now one thing you just need to make sure when you're doing it is that they end up quite square. Because I did a, a little sample out of paper and I don't know if you can see some of my, oh it's not so bad on this one. Some of my pillars, anyway, on one of the ones I did, they were more kind of like uh, trapezium. I think that's the word. They were kind of they weren't actually like very square. Like this one edge was longer than the other edge because I hadn't trimmed them. So that's why you need to trim them. So when you come to sticking them together, I found the best way is if you just uh, pull over your like you know halfway sort of thing, and then just pop that over and stick them flat. And if you do that with all of them then what you'll end up with, hopefully, is a square. Um, and you'll soon find out if you've trimmed enough off, because if you haven't trimmed enough off, when you do this, it, w it won't fold properly, because it will catch on the edge. So I'm going to fold that over like that, and then there's one of your little pillars. So I'm just going to go ahead now, um, and I'm going to fold all of these up. Okay, so you should end up with your um, six pillars, two long ones, two medium ones, and two shorter ones. Okay, so now you can bring in your 5x7 base card that we had at the beginning. Um, and what you want to do is you're going to go ahead and stick your two largest ones on the back at the side. Now work out as well where your, you know, where your join is, work out where you want that to be. I'm going to have my join on this inside edge here so you'll put that like that now um, again with sticking this down you can either use a wet glue or you can use red tape I'm going to use red tape I do find wet glue easier to use because you've got a bit of wiggle room however if you want it to stick straight away which I do right now because I'm doing a video then you probably want to use red tape but you definitely need to use something strong so I'm going to go ahead now and um, stick these down onto here. Okay, so as you can see, I've lined up the edge with the edge of my card there and the same on this side here. Okay, so now's the time when you want to put your pattern piece in. So on my original, I used this teal snowflake card. So on this one that I'm going to use today, I'm using um, papers from the Arctic Christmas paper pad. Um, and I'm going to use the, the little tree. So that's going to go in the middle there. And this piece measures two and three quarters by six and three quarters. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in.
Okay, so we've stuck that down. So now what we want to do is we're going to work out the piece that goes across the front. So, as I said, if you are going to use acetate, then now is the time to add it. Okay. Um, if you're not going to use acetate, then um, and you're just going to use, you're just going to have your little front panels like this, then that's what you need to get next. Um, little side note for you. If you're using white card like I have here, you will need to cut yourself out some pattern strips, okay? Um, and if you're doing it like I've got on, on my card, then you'll need, uh, a, I would go a bit, because this is three quarters of an inch wide, and I'd actually go a bit wider, because I feel like this is too big a gap. So I would go for seven eighths of an inch by um, six and three quarters, so you need two of those, then seven eighths of an inch by four and three quarters and then seven eighths of an inch by two and three quarters so that's what you're going to need um yeah so you'd put your acetate on first and then you put your pattern strip over the top um i was wondering actually whether and it's something you guys might want to try you could actually put your pattern your acetate on first if you're doing acetate then stick your um front panel on and then after you've put your next um, pillar on, you then put the panel and it go the pattern panel and it goes all the way down and it actually covers up the inside of there. So that might be something you could try. I haven't tried that yet. So that might be something that you could possibly have a go with, which would then help and you wouldn't have to then cut extra bits for inside here. Uh, so that's a possibility. But anyway, today, because I've got pattern papers already, I'm not going to add extra pattern strips. I'm keeping it simple. So what I'm going to use next is I've taken a panel that is five by five. Well, actually, I did it seven by five because what I've done is I've cut using these little dies that I've got. I think I got these from Amazon. I'm not quite sure, but they're little house dies. Um, I'm not sure who originally came, you know, who originally did them, but they're really cute dies um, and they're really helpful. And they actually just cut out of your paper. So I've cut each of these and I've cut it out of... Um, some pearlized card and so I actually cut this panel to be seven by five and then I just made sure I knew where five was and that's where my hill started so that will go on there like that and then when I go and put my panel on I've got a bit of house sticking up but that's okay that will go on there like that so that's that's how that works. And the same on that side, I'm going to end up with losing a bit of house there, I think. But yeah, so that's what I've done there. But you want your panel basically to be, needs to be the height of your next pillar. OK, so once you've done that and you've worked out, you know, what you want on it. On this one, I just literally I, I cut them the right size. So five by five and three by five. And then I did a two by five at the bottom. And then I just literally just cut them like a slope. Just freehand, just cut a slope. So you can do whatever, really, whatever you, whatever your design is. You might want to have just have them straight. I don't know. You might want to have them dipped. You might want to have waves. Have them like a C. It's all different ideas you can do. So I'm now going to go ahead and stick this down. One thing to note is when you're sticking it down, I'm just going to turn this over because on the back, I'm just going to make a note of where, the, like the width of my, you know, where my pillar ends, and the same on this side. And that will just enable me then to add red tape in the right places. So I'm now going to go ahead and put red tape. This is the back of my panel. I'm going to go ahead and add red tape onto the back here. Okay, so on the back there, as you can see, I just had to turn it around because my pencil marks so I could see where I was taping. So I've just taped, so that will end up being either side, you know, within that pillar. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the backing off one side. So off this side. And then I'm going to marry this. I'm going to squish the whole lot off to the left so it's flat. Marry this up at the bottom and that right hand side. Actually, I'm not going to do it quite to the right hand side. I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, move it slightly. I think I'll probably do it 
there. Yeah, let's do it there. Oh, 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 oh. Get it married up. Now my panel is not quite the right width for some reason. But anyway, it's fine. It'll still work. It's, it's not a problem. So as you can see, I've got a bit of a gap here, but that's fine. I'd rather have a bit of a gap because you're going to put a panel, you're going to put a pillow over it. So you're not going to see that gap anyway. Um, I'd rather do that than it stick out. Um, so then I'm going to take the backing off the back here. And then we're going to fold the whole thing flat again. So we're going to squeeze it off to one side and stick it down like that. Okay. So that's your first panel and it looks a bit odd at the moment it has to be said it does look odd but don't worry we're going to build it up and it will make more sense so we're going to take the next set of pillars and they are going to go one's going to go there and one is going to go there so i'm going to go ahead now and stick these pillars down Okay, so I'm now going to go ahead and stick these um, pillars down. I'm just turning them around because I'm just looking inside to see what the pattern is inside, see what looks the best. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick these down. And again, I'm just going to squash them flat, marry up this side with the edge of this pillar, stick that down, and then do the same with that one. Okay, so now we've done that, I'm going to take my what was my 5x5 five five panel, but I've cut it where well, it was big, bigger than 5x5 five five because I had to obviously make allowances for the houses, but yours will be 5x5 five five unless you're doing the same thing as me. Um, and then that will go on there like that. And then these will go on in front like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and do what we did before with the tape. So I'm squish the whole thing off to one side. Just going to turn it round so I've got the back, mark it on, and then just make a little mark where the inside of the pillars are so that we don't end up putting too much glue on. Yeah, it's about there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tape this now. I will be turning it around quite a bit because I need to make sure I'm fitting the um, fitting it in the right place. So that's what we've got so far so now we're going to go ahead and stick these two pillars on the front and then we are going to stick our last piece over the top now the only problem i've got here is that that is slightly shorter so that's not quite perfect but whatever it's fine i'm not going to worry too much so we're going to go ahead and um, stick some tape on the back of this that we did before Okay, so that's what we're up to now. So then we're gonna take our last piece. So this piece is um, two by five. I've cut mine slightly bigger. I cut mine three by five because I had to make allowances for the steeple. But if you're just doing a slope, you need to cut it two by five and then cut it down. So basically whatever you're doing, where your slope or your land starts for the other two, it needs to be at the top. One side needs to be level with the top of that pillow in front, okay? um so this one's just going to literally go on the front there like that so i'm going to go ahead and stick that down okay so after i finished off i just decided it needed a bit of color um because it was just all white apart from that back bit it didn't look right so i've just went ahead and used some more of the um arctic christmas papers i used the uh the pink well it's like a peachy color heart bouquet paper um and i've just cut some panels out and slotted them in 
just inside there which I think makes the white pop better and it get, just makes it a bit more interesting to look at um, and then I've just got this little greeting and I'm just going to stick that at the top there and then my card is done okay so there it is finished um, the other thing as well that I thought you could do I haven't quite worked out how to do it and it would add extra bulk is if you use those rice lights those little micro lights that you can get um, and you could uh, add them at the back of these so that it lights up um, but obviously you have to find a way to put the battery pack in um, and it also would add extra extra bulk because at the moment that folds really flat um, and because I've used the 200 GSM uh, that would actually I reckon that would fit through our UK mail as far as width is concerned obviously the size of it the footprint of it because it would fit in a 7 by 8 envelope you're not going to get that in that would be a large letter but anyway it's, it's probably a hand delivery one to be fair um, but yeah I quite like the card I think it's nice it's got a lot of potential to do other things with it a lot of potential um, and I just think it's really cute so I hope you enjoyed it uh, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never, never miss a video. And we will see you next time. Bye.